Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to our continuing refreshed look at the U-Boat tutorial series. In today's episode we're going to touch upon discipline issues as well as looking at stealth and how to stay quiet. Here on the surface you can see that our discipline is at 100%. We have a plus 4 modifier due to varied dishes. Plus 4 indicates that we have at least 2 food types in the galley. You'll see we also have a negative multiplier of minus two from fatigue. This indicates that our crew wants a vacation. There is no way to get rid of the fatigue multiplier without going on vacation. This normally begins after spending approximately seven days at sea. It will increase to minus four over time. Provided you are not at alarm status, combating discipline problems is actually fairly easy. The simplest method, Excellent. grab your radio officer and turn on the radio. You'll see by playing music, we have a plus 10 per minute multiplier. Additionally, we could have an officer begin playing cards with the crew. We'll have the skipper here play at table number one. We could also have our second in command here play at table number two. As you can see, playing cards will give you a plus 7 per minute per officer playing to a maximum of 2. By taking a look at the storeroom, we can increase this further. We open up the galley, and we see that we have two food types, which gives us our plus 4 modifier. If we were to remove one of these food types, it will go down to a neutral number. You will no longer be getting a bonus. However, if we increase food types, we are now making plus 8 per minute from varied dishes. And by going to a maximum of 4, we can get that up to a plus 12. It's often tempting to simply have 4 food types in the galley at all times. Getting that plus 12 multiplier will normally combat most discipline situations. However, it's very important to note that the crew will consume all food in the galley at a sustained rate. What this means is, if you have four food types in the galley, they will eat through those four food types at a sustained rate. If we were to drop that back down to two food types, they will eat these two food types at a sustained rate without touching the rest of your stores. Long story short, if you're going on a long patrol, try to stay to two to three if you can, otherwise the crew will eat everything you've got aboard very quickly. Note that while you are at alarm, you cannot have any positive multipliers. We've started the alarms. We can no longer play any radio stations. We also no longer have the ability to have our officers play cards. And as you can see, we've also lost the positive multipliers for having varied dishes in the galley. So once again, when you are at alarm status, there is nothing you can do to raise morale. All right, here we are at approximately periscope depth. We have no negative multipliers due to our depth. However, if we slide on down to 30, you'll see that we get a negative two multiplier. The green zone on your depth meter will indicate a negative two multiplier to your discipline, all the way down to 99. If we move into the yellow zone, say 106 meters, you'll see that our current depth negative multiplier goes to 3. That's true all the way down to 150 meters on the dot. If we go beyond 150 meters, even 152 say, you can see that our current depth multiplier goes to minus 5. So again, green zone, minus 2. Yellow zone, minus 3 to the 150 meter mark. Below 150 meters, minus 5. Alright, here we are at periscope depth. You'll see here that we have a visibility of 5%. Our hull gives us 6 points of visibility, and the attack periscope being up gives us 4. The cloudiness of the day gives us a negative 3 multiplier in our favor. If we go ahead and grab the skipper here, and up here in the left hand corner tell them to hide the periscope, you'll see that we lose that 4 points for the periscope. 
If we slide on down a little further, say to 20 meters or so, you'll see that we are no longer visible at all. Our hull will no longer give us away, visibility-wise. The next thing we want to look at is noise. We are making 91 decibels of noise. Our gyro compass being on is making 84 decibels. The crew is making 80, the steering engine's 80, electric engine's 88 as we are at speed 1, and torpedo loading is going on, making for 86. The surface noise of the day is giving us a negative 1% multiplier. All right, we finished loading torpedoes, but now, but now our mechanic is warming torpedoes, which is still giving us 86 decibels. Very important to note, when you are trying to creep up on anything, warming torpedoes will give you away. Let's go ahead and send our engineer to bed. And suddenly our noise output is 90 decibels. We can turn off our gyro compass. And now that's no longer outputting noise. We're down to 89 decibels. If we grab an engineer type, we can affect the issue of the steering engines. Again, with an engineer type selected, mouse over the depth steer station and right click. You'll see that we can switch to manual steering. We'll go ahead and do that. And now we are only outputting 88 decibels. We are no longer using the electric steering, which makes its own noise. By killing our engines, we can get down to 80 decibels. And by going to crew lighting, we've told the crew to be as quiet as they can. We are now no longer outputting any noise whatsoever. We are still detectable to sonar, as our hull is 100% susceptible to being pinged. Something else to keep in mind when you're setting up for an attack, especially when you're dealing with warships, you'll often see that your depth meter will bob back and forth, especially in rougher seas. Your conning tower may actually become visible from time to time. To combat this, we'll grab an engineer type and have him improve depth keeping. This will greatly cut down on our chances of broaching the surface. Another very handy trick for creeping up on war convoys is you can still fire torpedoes at 20 meters. 20 meters is the absolute maximum depth that you can fire a torpedo from. It's the stealthiest way that I found to take out wary targets. Here we are at 20 meters. We have this empire in our sights. Let's go ahead and take her down. I'm going to lower the dispersion of the torpedoes down to, say, 25. I'm going to increase their depth to 2.5 meters, and I'm going to increase their run speed to 44 knots max. Let's go ahead and fire. Something to bear in mind, if you click on your torpedo, hit the little camera button down here in the lower left, you can actually ride the torpedo to target. Bear in mind that the torpedo's viewpoint will disappear at the moment of impact, so you won't actually get to see it slam home. We can also go to the camera view of the ship we just attacked. Before we go back up to the surface, let's take a look at the valves. If we right click on them, you'll see that we can blow the tanks emergency or simply blow the tanks. The difference between the two is actually fairly significant. If you select blow the tanks, it's exactly the same as if you selected surface here beside your depth meter. You will use approximately 36 percent of your compressed air to bring you to the surface. If you select blow the tanks emergency, you will use 100 percent of your compressed air, so you will have none in reserve if you have to dive again quickly. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed the content today, go ahead and hit like, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.